welcome to the online samosa and yes welcome namaste and today's topic is levels of enlightenment last week we told you about what is enlightenment we didn't tell you why you should do it we didn't tell you how to do it today also we are not going to tell you why, why or how but today we're going to tell you very important what are the levels and we're going to focus on the first level today okay right okay so let's go into it mm-hmm. the levels mm-hmm. are actually what you gain as you gain knowledge and self awareness and they give you each level gives you an immense ability to be able to manage your environment and be happier and that's why this knowledge is very necessary and you're going to see you can you might even be able, be able to see where you are you might be you know higher than one or higher than two you don't know right so the level 1 is mm. called ignorance mm-hmm. okay we're going to call it ignorance maya right submerged in maya mm. level 2 is to see the veiling power Hmm. Of Maya, <laughs> or to see the power by which knowledge is veiled from you. You it's is there, but you're able to see that some you can see, some you cannot see. Okay, you're able to cross this. You're able to start. You're starting to cross this veiling, this ability to see through that this what you saw at first hand is not the real truth. Okay, the, the, the real knowledge is behind that. Second is called the projection. third one yes. third sorry mm. third one is called the projection power mm. by which your mind is able to project things when they are not even there but they're not but they're based on some sort of reality the greater your sense of awareness self awareness self knowledge and external knowledge the the less imagination you will use in projecting okay some people understand this and when we explain it in each detail you might say oh yeah yeah i i do some projection i, I i'm there mm-hmm. i'm higher than one i'm higher than two i i definitely i live in projection all right mm-hmm. that's called the third number four is called indirect knowledge indirect knowledge of enlightenment mm-hmm. somebody will explain you will hear you will meditate you will contemplate you will think about it you will try to apply to yourself and you will say i see it i don't have it mm-hmm. but i see what you're talking about and that's a, a big advancement in self awareness to be able to see mm-hmm. that it exists is possible mm-hmm. okay and you might even have tiny experience but not true experience a tiny experience meaning a like that mm-hmm. next one is called direct knowledge where you have directly experience for some moments mm-hmm. what enlightenment might feel like not your experience will not be that of full enlightenment but you'll be getting a good taste of it Okay, next is level five. Level six is cessation of grief. It ends. You reach this awareness where you're able to separate mm-hmm. yourself from the event around you, all the events around you, in such a way that the events happen, but the grief doesn't land. It has no place to land. It has. You have seen the separation. You have seen things that change that. and it keeps you in this very much wiser space mm-hmm. and the seventh and highest level is you are enlightened you have mm-hmm. reached permanent happiness and it is irreversible you can even try to go back okay mm-hmm. so the so today we're going to talk about ignorance mm-hmm. let's talk about ignorance okay okay in ignorance mm-hmm. you are living as you are kind of born which is that you are born ignorant you are born in which or in, in in a system in which your basic drive is your mind and mind we use here in the sanskrit sense which is called man mm-hmm. and mind in this def man in this definition is the seat of your emotion mm-hmm. and ego everything that your emotional engine and ego do that part of your brain is called the mind or man mm-hmm. and it is it exists even in animals that don't have any intellect because it has existed for a really long time mm. and we have it mm. because it's a basic survival engine when you're newly born mm. and if you don't fix it you don't get new knowledge you could be 25 years old mm. and still be level 1 mm. right mm. because it's a basic survival and you can survive just on this i mean your life is very painful but you survive mm. right and survival is a big goal of nature right so don't don't never diss it never think that this is a small thing it's not okay so what does the mind do mind says things i like i want more and things i don't like I want less. I want to avoid them, and this is how children and adults who are like that make their decisions. They want more of what they like and less of what they dislike, and they keep trying to do that. And if you look at them from a higher perspective, you see 
this person is thinking mm. that if their life is full of a whole bunch of very large number of small little pleasures, mm. then this person thinks they will eventually make them happy. Mm. A happy life is a life which is a string of pleasures. That's how ignorant person, level one person thinks. Mm. It's not true. It doesn't work like that. In fact, if you don't gain high levels of awareness, your life is 80% painful, mm. 20% pleasurable, if you are really lucky and good. Okay, otherwise, it could be 90, 10. Mm. Okay. And most people say, yeah, 10 is all you get in life. So it's okay, accept, accept that. The rest is just drudgery. Mm. Don't have to accept it. You can move up a level. Okay, so this in this level, what else happens? Because you keep having experience, you could be 25 years old and still, still living in level one. You keep having experiences in life and you really start to have some negative experience. And then you learn that this universe, I have to do tit for tat. If people do something bad to me, I have to give it back to them. Mm. If they say do something good to me, I have to thank them and do something good for them in return. Mm. You learn this as a survival technique. Because if you don't do this, people keep doing bad to you and you keep feeling hurt. But when you push back, then people stop hurting you so much and you feel a little bit better about yourself. So you learn this technique. We call it negative learning. This is not true, true justice. Mm. Okay, this is not. But it is a form of, you can say, um, pre-adolescent <laughs> child learning. Okay. Any any system of thought that teaches you tit for tat is okay mm. is basically telling you to remain like a child your whole life. Mm. Okay. And the concept of forgiveness is not available to you at this level. True forgiveness. So some forgiveness everybody has to learn to absorb, even if it's a show of it, because they find I have to work with this person. Mm. If I don't forgive them, even if I by telling myself artificially I forgive forgive them, then I can at least start working with them, even though I hold a grudge in my head. Right. So true forgiveness means you do not hold a grudge. It means even though that person did a bad mistake in your book, mm. you are able to move on and not have to use that against them or remind them or feel that that was against them because you feel that you can forgive them. Mm. And especially if they've learned something. And even if they haven't learned something, because forgiveness is something that you need to do to, for yourself. Right? Mm. Okay, like yes. that. Then they, this person at this level doesn't understand respect or self-respect. Those are advanced concepts. They need some self-knowledge. Mm. Then <clears throat> emotion management is not available to them. This person has a tough time becoming a manager or a vice president of an organization successfully. Mm. They'll be kind of just forcing people, mm. right? Instead of being able to manage people's emotions, manage people's uh, feelings, and inspire them to come in and feel like working hard, for example. Mm -hmm. right? That will be not so easy for them because their understanding of emotions is very basic, very basic, very simple. Mm -hmm. okay? They don't understand three-level chess, for example, when it comes to emotion management. Mm -hmm. And they end up thinking that when I don't get what I want, I have to blame someone. Every time they don't get what they want, it's somebody else's fault, never mind. Mm -hmm. So they don't even take ownership, which is self-respect. Self-respect is related to ownership. Mm -hmm. So blame others becomes a normal method for them to digest their events. This is how they process mm -hmm. in this level. And they not only blame them, other people, occasionally they blame themselves also incorrectly mm -hmm. because they, think, they feel that that will make me feel better. If I, put, if I say I'm to blame, then nobody else was in the room. This went wrong. Therefore, I'm to blame. And now I feel I blame somebody. So I have met my tit for tat requirement, mm. right? Mm. Tit for tat requirement becomes so heavy as a value that if something goes wrong, somebody has to blame, be blamed. Mm. Whereas to rise above blame is to say, look, when something goes well, not someone has to take credit. When something goes badly, nobody has to take blame. Mm. You must get to the root of everything and try to solve the science of it. Mm. Blaming or Praising is not so meaningful. You must rise above that. So this is called the level one ignorance. Okay. Very nice. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Now, did you, what did you pick up from this? <laughs> emotions, you know, when yeah. you talk about the emotions, yeah. that's what I picked up. And I also see that uh, I have, I am surrounded by some people who always give the blame to others and they don't, don't see it. They don't right. take the responsibility of their own actions. Ah. It's always somebody else is responsible for their, for their pain. For their pain. Yes. So you can see that people do exist. At oh, this yes, level, right? definitely. And but can you see that you yourself might have been at this level a long yes, time ago? Yes, yes. Very long time ago or, yeah. some, or not so long. Yes. And lately I have overcome one of the things is forgiveness. Ah. And so you've incorporated yes, forgiveness into your life. Yes. Cool. And it brings 
you are in another world, Sandeep. Yeah, you are. I've experienced that. Yes. It's good, another good, world. Good, good, very good. So very good. Excellent. And very nice. Good. Right, good. Very so, good. But, but what I wanted to hear was your true experiences. Yes. I appreciate that. Yes. And next time, tune in. We'll talk about the next level, which is the veiling power. Yes. Warm namaste from Yamini Vitter. And from Sandeep Tiwari with the online samosa. Namaskar. Thank you.